If you've watched some of my videos in the past, I may have mentioned a guy named um, uh, Bo. Actually, it turns out his name's not really Bo. That's something I can take up with my therapist at a later date, but uh, he's got a great channel called Bo, Bo of the Fifth Column. And uh, in one of his videos, actually it's in a few of his videos, I'll post them in the description below. I'll post links to them in the description below. But in these videos, he talks about something called Rule 303. Now, it's got kind of a shady beginning, but the way he describes it and the way we're going to apply it into our context into this talk today is it's simply this. Rule 303 is if you have the means to help, you have the responsibility to help. If you have the means, you have the responsibility. Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today. My name is Ed Trevers. I'm an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island. I get to serve in the beautiful town of Shelburne, Nova Scotia, in the awesome parish of Christ Church, Shelburne, that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And today, we're going to talk about this Rule 303. There's a lot of talk right now about how crappy 2020 has been. Uh, it seems like 2020 has been filled with, uh, well, I mean, it's not seems like, it has, we've had a pandemic for much of it. We've had uh, a, a great deal of political uh, and economic stress. There's, an, um, there's a, a U.S. election, there's several elections going on up here in Canada. Um, there's the potential of others, others happening. Uh, we've got uh, basically the west coast of North America is on fire. Uh, we have a looming recession that uh, I, I think is probably still on its way. We have uh, famine uh, in parts of the world. We had more named hurricanes than any other season. I'm curious what they're going to do once we run out of Greek, uh, Greek alphabet letters. Uh, we have, let's see, oh, a second, uh, a second wave of COVID-19 now slamming into Europe and parts of Canada. Um, we have wars, we have violence, we have civil unrest, we have, uh, it just seems like we've got it all, right? It seems like we, 2020 has given it all to us but I'm not necessarily certain 2020 has actually been all that different than any other year. I'm actually serious when I say I think maybe one of the reasons why we think 2020 is so, so bad is because, not because it's giving us anything new, but because we're getting so much of it, we can't possibly ignore any of it. And, and that brings us to the main part of our topic. If these problems, for the most part, have always been with us, and it's just a matter that we can't hide it anymore, then we are going to have to work closely together in order to get through. And when I say closely together, I don't mean all of us pitching in an equal amount. I mean all of us pitching in what each of us can to help the entire community. There's a story in the gospel, we actually uh, read it last week in church and, and I preached on it last week, but it's the story of the, the vineyard owner who goes into town in the morning and he hires a bunch of guys for his vineyard. So he goes in, he promises them a day's wage and he sends them out to his vineyard, they go to work. He comes back into town a little while later, he sees some more guys standing around, they haven't been hired. He says, why are you still standing here? Well, nobody hired us today. Fine, go to my vineyard, get to work. Comes back into town a few hours later, sees yet more guys standing around, hires them, sends them back to the vineyard. Getting close to the end of the day, sees still more people standing around. Says, asks them, why are you here? Nobody hired us today. He says, fine, go to my vineyard. I'm hiring you, go to my vineyard. At the end of the day, 
he ends up paying them all the same amount. He pays them all the amount that he promised his earliest workers. So they all got a full day's wage, no matter if they, no matter if they earned it or not. And, and the crux of the parable is often seen from that perspective about, about fairness, where these workers who had been there all day long didn't quite think it was fair that workers who had just gotten there got paid the same amount. But I want to look at it from a little bit of a different perspective. I want to look at it from the perspective of the owner and the owner's motivation, especially if we apply Rule 303 to the owner. Remember, if you have the means, you have the responsibility. The owner is a person of wealth. He's a person of means. He has money, he has property, and he's sending people to work in his vineyard to make a product that he will sell for a profit. He has the means. We have to assume that when the vineyard owner went into town the first time, he hired all the people that he needed. I think that's a fair assumption. Because when he comes back later on, people are still standing around. They haven't found any work yet that day. Which means nobody came after him and hired them. He hired all the people that he needed first thing in the morning. So then he hires this second crew. Surely he would have hit his his needed number of men at this point. But then he comes in again and again and again. At the end of this day, he's no longer hiring people because he needs them. He doesn't. He probably didn't need them after the first batch. He's hiring them because he can. He's hiring them because financially he is able to hire them. He is hiring them because it is his responsibility to look after his neighbors. This concept, it should not be a surprise to Christians. The Bible is filled with God telling his people, look after your neighbors, look after your brothers and your sisters, look after the stranger, look after the immigrant, look after the foreigner, right? The Bible is filled with moments where God is demanding us, calling us, giving us the mission to take care of one another. Not after we've taken care of ourselves, to take care of one of each, to take care of each other at the same time, to take care of each other as part of our life, as, as part of our reason for being alive. So looking at this vineyard owner from the perspective of here's a man who already had all the workers he needed that day, but who at, but yet was still going and getting even more. It shows us the depth of that commitment the man had. It shows us the depth of the man's commitment to this call, to God's will. And that's what you and I need to do as well. If you and I have the means, we have the responsibility. Now, you and I have the means. Some of us have greater means than others. Some of us have means in different, with, with, di you know, with different gifts, with different skills, with different talents. But all of us have means. And whatever our ability happens to be, whatever our, our gift happens to be, however we have been blessed, we are called to use those things to live up to our responsibility to make our communities stronger, to make our communities better, to make our communities healthier, to, to help our our, our communities and our neighbors survive and to thrive and to be abundant. This isn't God's wish list. This isn't one of these things that he's asking us to do if we have the time or the opportunity. It isn't something he's saying if you get around to it. This is God's call. Love one another as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Take care of your neighbor. Take care of the foreigner. Take care of the immigrant. Treat them as though they were one of your own. 
You have the means. You have the responsibility. When God's people all come together to make a change, the community benefits. The community grows stronger. The community becomes healthier. When each of us use our means to live up to our responsibilities for our neighbors, for our strangers, for our friends, for our family, for the person that lives down the street, we give God glory. So I'd love to hear what you have to say about this. I'd let, if you agree with me, great. If you disagree with me, that's okay too. Let me know in the comments below. But I'd especially like to know what you think we can do to bring change to our communities, to bring strength to our communities, to bring our communities back together. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may you know the peace of being in God's presence. And I pray that you're able to look around your life and see all the different ways God has provided you means. And I pray you see that he has provided you the courage and the strength to take on those responsibilities as well. Amen.